Hi, I'm Glenn Dewis, and welcome to episode nine of my video podcast. Okay, so for this week, seeing as the uh, the new Wolverine movie has hit the big screen, I thought now would be as good a time as any to go through some of the retouching that I did on my own Wolverine picture that I think I did blimey, two, maybe even three months ago. Now since I've published this picture, I've had a lot of questions asking all kinds of things like how did I make the rain splashes, how did I make his skin look wet and all that kind of stuff. So I thought I'd just give you a quick run through this week to show you just a couple of the techniques of how I actually did those couple of things. So I'll kick off first of all by showing you how I did the wet look to his skin. Now before I jump over to that, just so you know, if you haven't already, head over to my YouTube page and down in the section, if you scroll down, I've got one section called Behind the Scenes. And in there I've got one video that's called How to Create Your Very Own X-Men Wolverine Picture. And that's roughly, what does it say, 23 minutes long. And in that uh, particular video I give you absolutely everything about the behind the scenes and all the retouching steps in this picture. So you see the uh, the thought process, the pictures that I collected beforehand, the studio shoot, and then every single retouching step to get this final image here. So that's available on my YouTube channel. But let's just quickly jump over then to show you how I made his skin look wet. So this is what the picture was like before. In fact, here you can see actually the skin where it's made to look wet. So if I turn off that layer there and also you'll see this effect on the wall below down here. So what I'll do is I'll just quickly show you how I did that and that's using a filter that's built within uh, Photoshop, it's been there for a long time, it's actually the plastic wrap. So what I'll do is I'll show you it then on the wall down here because it's exactly the same how I did it on his skin. So I've turned off those two layers here so you can't see the effect. I've got our, our base layer here, our image where we've got to this retouching stage for now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do like I've always said to do, work smart by converting, the, converting this to a smart object for smart filters. So we can always go in later and make any kind of alterations that we want. So it's a very, very flexible way to work. Now once I've done that, I'm gonna to go to the filter gallery. So I'll go to the filter menu and choose filter gallery from the drop down menu here. And when I go into there, let's just bring this back a bit so we can see what we're doing. The one I'm going to choose, like I said, is called Plastic Wrap. And you'll find that in the choice. You've got a load of menus down here with loads of different kinds of options and all these different kind of stylistic kind of effects that you can create. And the one we want is in the artistic folder called Plastic Wrap. Now when you're using this one, you've got three sliders and you can really play around with these to create the kind of effects you want. But we're only going for a very subtle wet look to the skin. So one thing I did was take these sliders all the way back to the far left. So they all virtually read zero and then one, one. So you can't really see the effect. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring up the highlight strength to, you know, bring it up to sort of maybe six or seven and then bring in the smoothness. And that's when you start to see this kind of like uh, glistening, kind of watery, highlighted effect that you'd get when the skin has got some kind of water on it. So you can bring up the detail slider as well, but the more you bring that detail slider up, the harder that effect is. So it kind of loses that look of what you'd want water to be. In fact, let's just scroll down so we can see it on the wall down here. There we go. So, for, so far, if you just look at the wall, this area just here, if I turn that on and off, you can start to see that it does have that look as if it's got water hitting it. So I'll just leave those settings around about uh, six, two, and three. So you just use those to whatever taste you like. So once I've done that, I'll click OK to come out of the plastic wrap filter. And if we just zoom out, you can see that obviously this has been applied to the whole layer. And it's actually quite a cool effect in the middle there. I quite like that. Um, <laughs> but what I want to do is I only want to restrict it to certain parts of his body and parts of this wall here. So because I used it as a smart filter, obviously it comes with its own uh, layer mask here. So what I can do is I can invert that to hide the effect. So if I turn this layer mask here to black by pressing Command or Control I, the effect is kind of hidden behind that black mask. So then all I need to do is get a brush. I'll make sure it's nice and soft, so 0% on the hardness. And then I'll just come in and just dab areas that I want it to be. So like if I wanted a little bit of water on his shoulder here, I'll just paint a few strokes on his shoulder there. And a bit on his hand here. I'm painting at 100% opacity. 
But what I can do is because this is a smart filter, I can also come in and lower opacity on the filter as well. So let's just go down to the wall and I'll add a little bit of this effect onto the wall as well. And rather than just painting across like this, I kind of painted a few strokes down because the water wouldn't be uniformly wet all over the wall there. I just kind of just painted in certain areas because it's adding in those highlights that that kind of water would do. So something like that. So if we zoom out, there we can see now, if I just turn that uh, filter on and off, you can see there that we can selectively bring in where we want this particular look to be. Now if we think that we've gone too high with that, even though this is a, a filter that's been applied to a smart filter, we can actually reduce the opacity on that. Because when we have a smart filter, we've got this little icon here, which is kind of like, I don't know, like some sort of uh, two little planks balancing on two little triangles. If we double click on that, what you'll see happens is you get this little dialog box comes up here. And the great thing is we have an opacity slider. So we click on the down arrow and then we can control how much of that filter we can see. So it gives us a heck of a lot of flexibility in how we can apply filters and control the strength of them later on. So that's just really quick and easy way that I did the skin to give it that kind of wet look. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you, again, is something that I was asked about quite a lot. And that is how I got these water splashes going down my Wolverine's back, on his hand, on the sword, and also some of them on the floor as well. And again, like most things in Photoshop, it was incredibly easy. All this consisted of was basically just having some uh, pictures of water splashing in a cup. Now let me just turn off the water splashes here and I'll show you what I mean. Now if I go to File and Place, now I'm using Place because I want my picture of water splashing to appear in my document that I'm currently working on. If I just did File and Open, it would open in a separate document that I'd have to drag it across and all this kind of stuff. If I just use File and Place, it makes it a lot quicker. Now I've got a file on my hard drive where I've got three pictures that have been taken where there's a just a simple glass of water with a black piece of uh, card behind it on glass and a penny, or sorry, an ice cube's been dropped into it to give this splash. So it's this splash here that I'm interested in. So here's what I'm going to do. I've done file place, it's put it into my document. You can see now that it's above my Wolverine picture. Obviously it needs to be resized so I can go to my free transform and scale it right down. Now to do that in proportion, I'm holding down my alter option key and my shift key and that kind of drags it down in proportion like so. And then I'm just going to drag it up to, let's put it onto his back just about here. So while it's got these transform handles around it, I can click out or come outside of there and I get the rotation. So I'll just rotate it around. In fact, let's just lower the opacity just a bit so I can see where it's positioned. So I'll put it somewhere like that as an example. Take the opacity back to 100 and I'll press return. So now I've got my image of my water splash, but I've obviously got this black background. Now the great thing here is I don't have to make any selections to cut out that water splash. All I need to do is use blend modes within Photoshop. So we've got normal blend mode over here on the layers panel at the moment. If I change this to screen, which is basically telling Photoshop I only want the brighter parts, the highlighted parts to come out and so I can see, get rid of all the dark bits. So I click on screen and there you go. I only see now the actual splash. We can see a few little areas around here. Obviously I've got the glass and what have you down the bottom which is overlapping onto his skin. Well all I need to do there is just get a layer mask get a black brush because that's saying white reveals, black conceals. So if I paint in black, I can conceal it so you can't see it on his skin there. So let's just paint it away like so and just move it down just a fraction. Now when I did more of these, what I did, rather than constantly going file and place, all I did was just duplicate this layer here. So I can do that by pressing Command or Control J. It creates a copy of it. Then I can use my Move tool to reposition it. And the only thing I need to make conscious uh, effort here is not to move exactly the same thing over here. So I need to do a few things to it to make it just look a little bit different to the one I've done. So when again, I can go back to my free transform. I can right click within the boundary handles here so I get the options come up. One of them says flip horizontal so I could do that one maybe and drag it across and then I could also resize it just so it doesn't look exactly like the first one. 
One thing I could also do then is maybe use the edit menu, transform and warp it as well, just to distort it so it doesn't look exactly the same. And that is all I did to do all those splashes going down. So I ended up with this kind of effect here. If I zoom in on the original finished picture, you can see them all going down his back. And we've got some on his forearm here and some on the actual sword and on the floor as well. And that's all it was. Just a, gla a clear glass of water with a black card behind it. Drop an ice cube in, get the splash and take a photo of it. Of course, you could also get those kind of images off stock, for so uh, stock photography sites like iStock Photo or photolio.com. Okay, so the final part of this uh, Wolverine episode, if you like, is just to show you how the blood was added onto his spikes here over in his hand. And again, really, really easy. If I just turn off the layers containing that blood here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a blank layer going to get a brush and I'm going to come over to my foreground colour. I'm going to click on the foreground colour and choose a red that's actually quite dark. So we'll go for around about there. And you can tell the colour I'm choosing because where it says new, that's the colour that I'm now changing. Before, it's black as you can see in the foreground colour, but the new colour when I click OK will end up being that red. And you can see it over here now in the foreground. So let's just turn off the blood there. Now for doing this, I remember I sort of had a... I don't want a completely soft brush, I want it to be fairly hard and then I'm just going to come down here and paint over the spikes here with this red. Now you might, uh, when you first start using Photoshop, obviously everyone loves opacity. Okay, Opacity is incredibly useful, incredibly powerful. And you might think for doing something like this, well all you need to do is just paint the red over it and just lower the opacity. But as you can see, you lower it and it just doesn't look red. It just looks like very faded red. Doesn't match in with all the highlights on the spikes. Now, all it is, again, it's going back to these things we have in our uh, layers panel over here, the blend modes. Incredibly powerful things, these blend modes. Now, I definitely recommend, just as a little side note, check out a book on Amazon by a guy called Scott Valentine. And he's got a book all about blend modes. It's very, very easy read. Great examples, and you'll get to know what all these different blend modes do here. Very, very good book. So what I'm going to do to make these, uh, make the blood here attach itself onto these spikes so it matches in with all the highlights and shadows, I'm going to change the blend mode to overlay. And you can see that it actually becomes uh, mapped in with all the highlights and the shadows. Now, if you think that that red maybe wasn't quite dark enough, you could obviously undo that, come back over to the foreground colour and choose a darker red. But one thing you could also do is just make a levels adjustment and just darken it down by using the mid-tone slider, something like that. And that is all it is. So that's three different parts to the Wolverine picture. You've got how to make the skin wet, how to make splashes, and how to add blood, should you ever need to, into your pictures. Okay, so thanks for tuning into this episode. As always, if you've got any questions or comments, just drop me a line to glynn at glynnjewis.com. And if you've got any tips or techniques that you'd like to see in future episodes, again, just drop me a line and I'll see what I can do. As always, if you haven't already, make sure you click on the subscribe button, which will probably be about, whereabouts in the frame will it be, Kieran? Around about, about down here, the <laughs> subscribe button just down here. And then you won't miss out on any future episodes of the, this particular podcast or any other little things that I throw out as well. Right. Weather's just about holding off. Got a classic car. There's only one thing to do. I'll see you next week.